Top 40 Tourist Spots in Palawan, Philippines. Another white sand beach that rivals the splendor of its more well-known rivals, like Boracay Island's White Beach, is Punta Sabarang Beach, Balabac, the southernmost town of Palawan, contains Bugsuk Island, which is where this undiscovered gem is located. You must take a boat from the mainland to get to Punta Sabarang Beach because it is situated in a more distant area of the province. You will notice the beach's miles-long stretch of fine, white sand as soon as you get there. Since there are no businesses on the island or near the shore, the beauty of the beach has not been harmed. Away from the beach, you may locate the neighborhood and soaring palm palms. Onak Island, a tranquil, privately owned island surrounded by crystal clear waters and filled with a canopy of palm trees, is located off the coast of Balabac town in the southwest area of Palawan. You'll dock at the island and step onto the fine, smooth sand. After that, you can explore the island's perimeter to find the ideal place to relax and sunbathe or go along the wooden path leading to the stilted wooden cottages. It's time to enter the water for a leisurely swim after settling into your favorite spot. You can hire paddle boats and head to deeper areas where you can snorkel if you wish to see the local marine life. Brokes Point, a world, which features lovely garden landscaping, agro-farm facilities, and an ideal venue for events like weddings and seminars, is one of the attractions of Brooks Point, Palawan. Visit Agriworld, which is located in Lada, Pangobilian, Brooks Point, Palawan, as the perfect setting for family time. Here, you can find a variety of landscapes with various kinds of flowers and plants. The local Brooks Point Authority owns the six hectares of land. The town wedding and other local government events are also hosted here. Visit the stunning secret Agriworld now. Sapsaban Falls One of Palawan's best-kept secrets is Sapsaban Falls. In the municipality of Brooks Point, the largest pearl ever discovered, is situated. Sapsaban Falls is actually quite ordinary and not particularly unusual compared to other falls. But this is one of the cool falls you may encounter if you're in Brooks Point. Around 15 kilometers from the center of the town, in Arabongos. The greatest way to see these falls is on a motorcycle. You will undoubtedly adore this location if you love the outdoors. The falls are located in the heart of a forest. The water is icy cold and the atmosphere is calming. Family vacation in Brooks Point is ideal. Kalad Safari Park. Kalad Safari Park continues to be the sole game reserve and wildlife sanctuary in the Philippines, protecting thousands of endangered and endemic species. The sanctuary's resident species include African creatures that were brought from Kenya in 1976, such as the reticulated giraffe and the Grevy's zebra, which is one of the most endangered zebra species in the world. These creatures can be found freely roaming in the sanctuary's 3,700 hectare area along with mouse deer, bear cats, and the local Calamian deer. Visitors taking a tour at the Kalaad Safari Park are permitted to do guided feeding to giraffe. Kulyan Island. Kulyan is a town that is suitable for persons interested in doing heritage excursions because it was formerly the largest leper colony in the world in the 1900s. Remains of the Spanish-era settlement still exist today, including a nursery for kids, a sanatorium, a male dormitory, and several plazas. Isolated from the outside world, its former residents, including Spanish priests and caregivers, lived among themselves and were isolated until it was deemed leprosy-free in 2006. The 333 Steps to Aguila's Viewpoint which offers a panoramic view of the municipality and the other islands in Calamians, are the ideal way to end your day. 
It is a distinctive tourist destination that is part of island hopping tours in Palawan and merits at least a space on your itinerary. Dumaran Island is the perfect destination for you if you prefer seeing regions that aren't frequently frequented by tourists. It is roughly 231 kilometers away from Puerto Princesa, the major port of entry for Palawan via air and some sea vessels, which is located in the city proper. Public transportation, such buses or shuttle vans, is available to get you to this laid-back town. The path leading to this secret paradise is difficult to navigate, though. One of the obvious signs of the town's underdevelopment is how tiny, rough, and unpaved it is. But as they say, without pain, there is no gain. Manguao Lake Tete, in the northern part of the island of Palawan, the town of Tete has Manguao Lake. One of the largest freshwater lakes in the Philippines, this 640 hectare lake is well known for its size. It's a terrific place for a quiet break because thick forests border its turquoise waters and provide both visitors and locals with breathtaking views. There are three indigenous fish species in the lake. In the meantime, 29 different species of mammals and 136 different birds can be found in the verdant woodlands nearby. Birdwatchers frequently congregate around the lake to look for uncommon or indigenous species such as the Philippine duck, Palawan hornbill, and peacock pheasant. The lake is also designated as a municipal conservation area and an ecotourism zone due to its abundant biodiversity. Barracuda Lake is one of Corin's other well-liked lake attractions. The rock formations and the turquoise waters of the lake will cause you to pause and gaze for a moment before dousing the afternoon heat by diving into it. Divers found a barracuda skeleton in its depths, which is how it received its name. The boat ride to the lake is beautiful, until you approach the docking zone you will observe sedimentary rocks towering over the ocean. Barracuda Lake is also one of the cleanest lakes in the nation and a well-known attraction included in an island hopping tour in Corin. Kyingda Lake Kyingdan Lake is without a doubt one of the nicest sights to see while doing an island hopping tour of Corin. When your ship docks at the gate, you will need to take a short walk before you can get to this excellent tourist location in Corin. As you approach the bay, be sure to take in the striking limestone formations and the blue waters. Black Island Because of the enormous limestone rock formation in the island's center, which appears gloomy and foreboding from a distance, Black Island in Palawan received its name. Black Island, despite its name, is a magnificent haven with a flawless white beach and a turquoise water. It's perfect for people who enjoy outdoor pursuits like hiking, exploring caves, snorkeling, or simply relaxing on the beach. The coral reef surrounding Black Island is suitable for both snorkeling and freediving. Tourists may enjoy the stunning corals and several fish species on the island. A vast limestone rock formation in the island's center leads to a system of explorable caverns. Only a handful of the tunnels and catacombs can be accessed from the coast, despite the fact that there are many to explore. The trip to the Mount Tapios viewing platform is worthwhile. You'll see a big white cross when you reach the top, which you can also see when you're in town but not as panoramically as in the viewing deck. The mountain is easy to climb because most of it involves walking on concrete steps, and there are several platforms and benches where visitors can stop and rest before continuing. Before you reach the top, you'll see Corin's unusual perspective that gets better as you go higher. Don't worry, there are rails to grasp onto as you climb. The Twin Lagoon, located in the province of Palawan's Corin Island, is a gorgeous lagoon divided by imposing limestone walls. A little adventure can be had by visiting the lagoons, which can only be reached by boat from the town core and require navigating a maze of enormous limestone walls. 
A twin lagoon trip can be purchased if you're looking for a hassle-free excursion. Boats land at the first lagoon, and from there, guests must swim to a shaky wooden stairway that leads to the second. A cavern that connects the two lagoons can be waded through during low tide, but other times you must swim a few meters completely underwater before coming to the surface in the other pool. A Corin Ultimate trip includes it as one of the top attractions. One of the widely recommended tourist destinations on a Corin Day excursion is Siete Picados. This marine park is attractive because each of its seven islands is filled with different marine creatures. The area is well known for its rich marine life, which is immersive as you dive into its blue seas. From there, you can either jump off and start snorkeling right away or descend the ladder to the ocean. Due of its usefulness, Siete Picados is one of the best places to visit in Corinth. Sea turtles tropical angelfish, and squid call Siete Picados home. Baker's Hill is a well-liked tourist site located atop a hill in Barangay Santa Monica, Puerto Princesa. Over time, it changed from being a popular bakery known for its delicious pastries, especially hopia, into a magnificent park. The owners gladly offer guests access to their private property. In addition to their famous Hopia, Baker's Hill is the best place to buy, Pasalubong, gifts to bring home from a trip. Additionally, they offer delicious baked treats including pizza, pastelas, crinkles, cakes, and bread. Yugong Rock Caving, Puerto Princesa, Palawan, Philippines. Explore the amazing caves of the 75 feet tall limestone formation. Yugong Rock. Named after the Yugong, or gong-like sound heard when the hollow rock formations are pounded on by hand, it is made up of several caves that lead to the top where you can enjoy panoramic views of the countryside. The Palawan Butterfly Ecological Garden and Tribal Village is a one-of-its-kind attraction that promotes public awareness by showcasing the beauty of the world of insects and the cultural background of the indigenous people of Palawan. One of the city of Puerto Princesa's newest attractions is the Mauyan River Cruise. A delicious lunch and a visit at a century-old huge tree are included in the 45-minute river ride. You can take a river trip here and take in the picturesque scenery and rich vegetation. Bring your family and friends along for a bamboo rafting adventure at the Burabad picnic spot or go paddling to some nearby enormous Dao trees. The Olangon Olangwan Falls, a community-based initiative in Barangay Bindian, is a great place to go swimming, picnicking, and relaxing in nature if you want to spend a day away from Puerto Princesa City. Local transportation is reasonably priced. New bridges, steps, and bridges over stones have been added to the path recently as maintenance. It's a short, fairly flat hike that's quite easy. Honda Bay was one of the first tourist destinations in Palawan to gain recognition. Honda Bay tours make it simple for visitors to discover three stunning sandbars, Muli Island, Kauri Island, and Starfish Island thanks to a pier that can be reached from anywhere in the city within 30 minutes. The Kauri shells found nearby gave the island its name, Kauri. A lavish picnic-style dinner can be had there in addition to swimming and relaxing. Among the beaches in Palawan, Nagtaban Beach is popular with tourists. Despite not being as well known as other beaches, the beach has its own unique beauty that soothes tourists weary. Even if Nagtaban isn't high on your list of places to go, going to the beach is still worthwhile. Many visitors to Nagtaban Beach refer to it as the Virgin Beach because of how clean it is. There aren't any retail establishments, lodgings, or even travelers. The beach, however, makes up for its sparse surrounds with its quiet atmosphere. The beach's pristine condition, the crisp, clean air, 
the sound of birds chirping, and the melancholy atmosphere are all sufficient for complete relaxation. The underground river of Puerto Princesa is the second longest subterranean river in the world. It is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site, drawing in thousands of tourists each year. You'll have a pleasant view of the countryside on the way to the jumping-off location in Sabang Wharf. Your journey to the underground river will then begin when you board an outrigger boat. Following disembarkation, a short walk through a forested nature trail and via wooden walkways will bring you to the cave opening, where paddle boats for exploring the cave are moored. Belay on parks and cherry blossoms in order to promote the aesthetic benefits of a green environment as well as environmental consciousness in the city. The Belayong People's Park project was initially initiated as a component of the Urban Forestry Project. The environment, economy, health, and social community all benefit from urban trees in different ways. The project aims to reduce air pollution, which will help the environment become cooler and cleaner. It will also improve economic stability by luring more tourists, encourage a healthy lifestyle in the community by encouraging outdoor physical activity in a more natural setting, and increase opportunities for community interaction thanks to the facilities the project will include. Nasirik Island, the famous Nasirik Island of Quezon, Palawan, also known as Mansirik Island to its locals, stands out among the other islands we visited thanks to its pristine beach and stunning rock formations. Nasirik is an islet of sand and sandstone surrounded by rainbows of corals. The location boasts a truly unique assemblage of marine life nearby. Please take your responsibility to care seriously as a co-inhabitant of this small but fragile island. Nasirik here. A magnificent islet of sand and sandstones, a hot point for biodiversity. Taban Caves, the Philippines, cradle of civilization, Taban Cave, is a location revered for its anthropological and historical significance. It is situated along Quezon Town's western shore in southern Palawan and is bordered by water on its north, east, and west sides. 38 caves have been determined to be of archaeological and anthropological significance, and the Taban Caves also contained a wealth of significant archaeological materials from an extensive time range. The Taban Caves, which number around 200 caves, are collectively known as the Taban Caves after the main cave called Taban. Manungal, a secondary burial jar discovered, is regarded as a national cultural treasure. Bado Ni Ningning, located in Barangay Sto, Bado Ni Ningning is a famous rock perched atop a hill. Nai in San Vicente, Palawan. The location with the large boulder served as Ningning's playground in a television show, hence the name. Traveled to this barrio in order to witness and appreciate Sto's magnificent vistas. Neo and the lengthy beach at San Vicente. Beautiful countryside views are offered during the journey. The early part of the journey was on paved roads, while the final section was on dirt roads. This is the city, it was explained to me, that divides the barangays by the state of the roads. We were in Palawan, so everything was fine, I have no problems. Bigaho Falls. The falls are conveniently accessible by taking one of the local boat cruises from San Vicente or Port Barton despite being located in a remote section of Palawan. Near the falls, there are also many additional affordable and upscale lodging options. After your boat lands on the beach, you will need to take a short stroll through the forest past the charming little settlement of Bigaho, which is primarily made up of grass huts and small farms. As you stroll through the village, you will see how the native Filipinos have lived simply and coexisted with nature for many years. When you arrive at the falls, you will be rewarded with a magnificent waterfall, a dreamy swimming hole, and a green jungle backdrop. Pamwayan Waterfalls, the 8-meter-high Pamwayan Falls, 
also known as Papayan Falls, has a tiny basin that is ideal for swimming. Although the water is really cold, it is refreshing. You should exercise caution when swimming because the current could be strong. Pamwayan Falls is still worthwhile visiting simply because of how natural it looks and feels. There is also a location where you can cliff dive, but we've been told that it's not permitted due to accidents. Finding a waterfall in the mountains is satisfying in some way. During our visit, there were no other visitors, and it's probable that you'll have a similar experience. Additionally, it's a welcome break from Port Barden's sea view. Port Barden it's peaceful, serene, and quiet at Port Barden. Although Puerto Princesa City is only a two to three hour drive away, there are fewer people here than in some of the province's more well-known neighboring cities. As the area has several tourist attractions ideal for every traveler, taking a Port Barden day tour is worthwhile. This tranquil beach town is reachable by land from Poblacion and is located around one to two hours away from the capital. One of the best Port Barden trips is island hopping. You can travel there or decide to stay for a few evenings. San Vicente's Long Beach offers a relaxed ambiance that is ideal for travelers interested in sightseeing, long beach days, watching the sun set, and island hopping. It is the second longest white beach in all of Southeast Asia and the longest in the Philippines. Its 14 kilometers of unspoiled beachfront are triple the length of Boracay's White Beach. Long Beach has some front beach and off-beach hotels and is located 40 kilometers from Port Barden, another important San Vicente destination. Booking a space here is ideal for people who seek easy access to different areas of the 14.7 kilometers stretch of White Sand Beach. The Big Lagoon is distinguished by its vividly hued waters and magnificent limestone rocks in the distance. The Big Lagoon is bordered by limestone rocks, like many of Palawan's lovely lagoons. The pool at the entry is an amazing Gatorade blue that tourists typically stay on the boats a little while to marble over. However, the rocks in this area are just hill high. There are a few coves and lovely, clear waterways between them. A little pond with the size of a room is connected to a tiny cave in this tourist attraction. El Cave is located in New Ibaje, El Nido, Palawan, and is a huge late Eocene pavilion karst feature. A 10 meters high overhang that extends from the cave's mouth gives it a height of around 100 meters. It is situated beneath a 75 meters, 246 feet, limestone tower. East and west are the two primary entrances to the cave, both of which face south. Large excavations are carved into both lips. The cave is surrounded by, and is covered in, mainly secondary growth trees. The cave's floor is primarily dry. Although there are a few spots where water from the roof has dripped down, making the ground damp in certain spots. The cave was used as a home and a graveyard, according to radiocarbon dating. Hidden Beach known also as Secret Lagoon, it is a must-see location while visiting El Nido and is included on island hopping tours in El Nido. In the southern region of Minilok Island, your boat will initially go for a small white sand beach. Passing into what seems like a hollow rocky cave requires extra caution, so dock your head. You can walk right into the opening during low tide. You'll be greeted by the secret lagoon as you enter, a tiny natural pool encircled by extraordinarily tall limestone cliffs. You can take a dip in its gorgeous, white sand's natural pool of cool water or simply sit around and unwind. While swimming in the lagoon, take in and relish the surrounding scenery. Nakpan Beach is a 4-kilometer stretch of sand with a cream tint, coconut trees, and blue sea. In Palawan, it is located 17 kilometers to the north of El Nido's main town. If visitors wish to soak up some sun, they can relax in hammocks or on the beach. 
Aside from swimming, visitors to Nakpan Beach tours can attempt surfing, kayaking, and stand-up paddleboarding. They can also choose to relax in one of the city's shaded areas. For those who want to explore the clear water, there are masks, fins, and snorkels available. The Nagkalit Kalit waterfalls, which are situated halfway between El Nido's main town and Nakpan Beach, are a favorite destination for inland trips. Before reaching this cool location from the road, you must walk for 20 minutes through the jungle. Just be mindful that you will need to navigate wet terrain. Given how short and simple the trek is, it is preferable to don flip-flops rather than hiking boots that will get wet anyway. You will see that there are actually two waterfalls at the Nagkalit Kalit waterfalls, the Great Waterfall and the Tiny Waterfall. The first one creates a swimming-friendly natural pool. It's a lovely spot to unwind and breathe in some fresh air. Seven Commandos Beach is like entering a heaven. It boasts a lengthy stretch of fine white sand and a row of swinging coconut trees beneath its impressive limestone cliffs. The beach is a stop on El Nido Island hopping cruises that also visit popular locales Big Lagoon and Small Lagoon. The journey often begins at Seven Commandos, where guests can swim, snorkel, and gorge on cool coconut juice. Shimizu Island one wonders about the island's origins because of the Japanese-sounding name. A crew of scuba divers reportedly investigated El Nido's waters decades ago, according to guides and boatmen. Sadly, one of them never returned after a lengthy underwater tunnel. Days were spent looking for the diver's body, which was eventually discovered on an island with impressive rock formations and lovely white beach. Visitors can visit the island on an El Nido Island hopping tour while the boatmen prepare lunch. The island was named after the deceased diver, whose last name was Shimizu. Use the time wisely by swimming and snorkeling while you wait for the food to be served since boats will only dock here for less than an hour. Small Lagoon buys at Small Lagoon if you're looking for more lagoons to explore. The Big Lagoon is much larger than this, but it can't be disregarded when it comes to the distinctiveness and attractiveness it radiates. The sheer limestone cliffs that surround the turquoise waters of El Nido Small Lagoon make it a popular destination for tourists on island hopping tours. Contrary to the Big Lagoon, which has an accessible opening, the Small Lagoon has a more restricted entrance. You can swim or paddle a kayak through a hole in a limestone wall to enter. Snake Island The S-shaped, 3-meter long sandbar that gives this island, also known as Vegan Island, its unusual name is the reason for its name. Snake Island trips are popular because of its turquoise waters, which are as clear as those on any other island in El Nido. It's one of the islands where you may experience what it's like to walk out in the midst of the ocean. Snorkeling along the beach allows you to view the underwater marine life, including small fish, sea turtles, corals, and starfish. Snake Island is also a paradise with abundant mangroves and lush flora, where monkeys are frequently spotted. Korong Korong Beach the beach here is a little less congested and touristy while being only a short stroll from El Nido City. Several local residences perched high on wooden stilts may be found on the beach's one end. A fantastic chance to see how the locals live everyday life is presented here. As you proceed towards Las Cabanas Beach, you will pass a few cottages along the water's edge as well as a few modest bars and eateries that are well concealed by the huge palm trees. Korong Korong Beach is the ideal location for you if you're searching for a less crowded, more secluded beach in El Nido. Dooley Beach, you might not immediately think of surfing when considering El Nido. The only location in El Nido where you can get some surf is Dooley Beach, which is typically reserved for Siargao or La Union. This location has good surf from November to April, 
and novices will love the sandy beach break. Dooley Beach is a two-kilometer stretch of golden sand that is almost entirely undeveloped, save for a few local restaurants and Dooley Beach Resort at one end. Aside from the waves, it is a large beach that is popular with both residents and visitors. The resort we refer to is actually more of a tavern with a cluster of six or so cottages surrounding it. El Nido's Tara Cliff offers a breathtaking vantage point from which to view the adjacent islands and rows of boats lining the bay. Tara Rock is the ragged cliff looming behind the town that appears to be impossibly pointed and not at all climbable when viewed from the bay looking back towards town. However, there is a route to the top. Although it's a strenuous climb that's not for the faint of heart, if you consider yourself an adrenaline junkie, this hike is not to be missed. Baby, it's risk and reward. There is a gentler climb called the El Nido Canopy Walk if walking along limestone spines and clinging to cliff sides isn't your thing. We wholeheartedly endorse the full climb if you believe you can complete it. One of the best things to do in El Nido is hike Tara Cliff. The Tubataha Reefs Natural Park, one of the top diving locations in the Philippines and the world, is located in the southern part of the island and is a marine sanctuary as well as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is located in the waters off the town of Cagayancia. Two atolls, or ring-shaped reefs, which are home to a variety of vibrant aquatic creatures and corals, make up the entire sanctuary. In fact, you can find over a thousand distinct marine animals here, including sea turtles, sharks, manta rays, and clownfish. There are also over 100 different species of birds here, some of which even build their nests in the trees, in addition to the aquatic animals. Travelers can choose land, sea, or air routes to reach the province of Palawan and its prime attractions. Since more flights arrive here than at other airports, Puerto Princesa frequently serves as the entry point to the province of Palawan. It is vital to consider which location best suits your tastes as your